Today I'm going to uh, show you how I'm going to make a coffee table. The coffee table is for myself. It's a live-edge slice of a uh, Nakashia tree that came down during uh, Typhoon High End. Uh, somebody had made up a furniture and they had put nails into it and put plywood on here and they had polished the other side up. It's all uneven and everything. So what I want to do is I'm going to make it into a nice coffee table for myself, for my own house. It's really, really heavy. It's nearly three inches thick there. Uh, I'm going to completely flatten it with, with, with a router. What I've done was I, uh, I used plywood because plywood is much more stable than, than uh, normal lumber. So I have these two and I sided them off one another and they're perfectly level. I put shims under this. When you're putting shims on this, you're going to build it up with shims. Make sure that the shims are all exactly the same size when you're lifting it up or else you'll be cutting out too much. And then I made up the sled, and the sled is made from plywood also because I know that this is... I brought this very wide on the side, so I'm putting the router in sideways with the handle on both ends. That means you can do it. Otherwise, the handles will hit off here. I know that from my last one. Uh, so we have a cutout here on it here. You see it? Uh, we have already started doing it. There's a big, big high spot here and a high spot there and a high spot there and a big low spot there. So I'm going to be going down a, a more than a half an inch on, on, on this at the moment and to get the bottom of it level. This is going to be the bottom. Maybe it'll be the top. I don't know yet. Now, the bit we use. I'll give you a link to where to get this bit. Uh, we do, I'm doing one millimeter at a time. This is the, drill, the bit I have. It's 50 millimeters, right? You need a heavy duty router. This router is nearly 30 years old. It is still being sold. Makita still sells this router, but I think the, all the new ones are variable speed. This one doesn't have. When you're routing, your wood is on your left, right? So you're not driving over the wood. You are f cutting into the wood. So you're going clockwise. If you were driving, you'd be going if, uh, that way. So always have the wood on the left. So as I am driving here and we're going down this way on the wood, that's the way to do it. And don't be tempted to go over and then back again because it'll start driving. It'll, a router starts driving, it becomes dangerous. I'm passing it over to the other side to Rex. This is a much safer way of doing it. And then when we've, when we've gone down along it, it's two inches at a time, it's fairly quick. Even though we're only one millimeter, Okay, so that came out. Oh, that came out actually very good. You, you might look like it, there's a, a difference between one and the other, but that's almost smooth. Very little sanding on that. Few little burn marks. Uh, you can if it can avoid pushing the uh, stopping while you're while you're going over and back and on the ends where we were moving over. But that will sand out. It's only a very very slight little burn. So the the shims. Make sure the shims are exactly the same size, right? These shims here are, uh, I actually done them on the thick, planar thicknesser to make sure they're all exactly the same. Uh, so now what we're going to do is we're going to turn it over and what was originally the f top side, we're going to bring that down. It's going to end up being down at about 40 something millimeters. Okay, so that took altogether both sides nearly three hours, I think. Uh, what I thought was cigarette burn was rust. There was a nail here and a nail there, a four inch nail here and a two inch nail here. Uh, I got this one out. I managed to drill this one down most of the way. I, there's no way I can pull it out. I presume it's almost down to the other side. Uh, what happened was they probably put water-based glue filler inside in it and the rust, that's what made it brown like a cigarette burn. We will fill these uh, with some, I will make a filler for it based on epoxy. Uh, yeah, that's smooth. Uh, I know you can see lines there, but that's just the overlap, but there's actually not, not even a hair between there and there. That's perfectly. So what we're going to do then is we're going to sand it, and then I will, uh, any little crevice here, I will fill with epoxy, and I will darken the epoxy. I'll make the epoxy black from sawdust, like we did when we were making the boat. You remember? Well, if you didn't see me making the boat. Uh, this is the top. Yeah, I'm happy with this now. 
the sides we will take all the varnish off the sides as well and then uh, we will talk about doing the legs okay so we've sanded it all up on both sides we've done a better job on this side I didn't fill anything on this side I filled it on the other side uh, sealing it I'm using a, a self-leveling epoxy it's different than laminating epoxy and uh, I'm going to give it a sealing coat first and then when the table is all made up I'll level the table and we will put on a thick coat of it with a squeezy and, and a hot air gun but I'm just going to set I'm going to I'm going to seal it and after when the ceiling is dry then these little shakes then we can fill them and, uh, and, and give it a, we can give it a light sanding before its final coat. So I'm going to try it with a roller, I done the other side with a brush it was a bit difficult so I'm just going to roll it out like this. If it bubbles a bit it's only the first coat, uh, don't worry about it too much. So it, it's not going to be even. Don't, but don't worry about that because it's going to get a big coat the next time. Uh, it's soaking in there and uh, we'll just leave it tomorrow then. I will fill these crevices. I will make up my own filler from epoxy and a little bit of sawdust and maybe a bit of cell, maybe not. And we will fill the few holes and uh, it will be nice. Uh, it looks okay so far. Uh, it, uh, it's not evenly soaking in in all the places but that's normal. We filled the, 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 the shakes that were in the wood, the star shakes, and we filled the nail holes that were down the other side. We made up our own filler. Uh, it's 95% there. Uh, it looks very black now. It won't be that black when it's shiny, believe me. Uh, this, is, this is ready for finishing, but we're not going to finish this till after we do the legs. So we will just set this aside, and then we will, we will proceed to make the, the, the legs. Okay, so we're going to make the legs out of three quarter inch plywood or 18 m plywood. It's marine grade plywood. We're going to sandwich, I think, three pieces together or four to make the hourglass shape. So how do we work it, this out? Uh, well, you have the shape in your head, but I will explain to you how I done mine. Now, the height of your, uh, it's important that the height of your coffee table is the right height for your couch. Near enough. The rule of thumb is that the, that the couch height, the couch height, uh, the table should be 20 mm or 40 mm below the height of the seat of the couch. That is, uh, it's, it's, it's normally uh, ergonomic, I think that's the word, at that. I'm going to do a 20 mm. So our, our couch height inside is a little bit on the low side. A lot of couches would be up to 18, 19 inches. Ours is 17 and a quarter inches, which is 440 millimeters. So we have 440 millimeters. We're going to take off just 20 millimeters because it's such a big table, I don't want it so low. And so we're left with 420 millimeters. Now then you will take off, because these are the legs, then you will take off the slab. Now the slab uh, is worked out at 45 millimeters inside, right? So we have it inside there. Uh, it's finished at 45 millimeters. So we'll take 45 millimeters off also. And then we're left with 375 millimeters. So 375 millimeters will be the height of our legs. 50 millimeters. I have made the width. So you make up a box 440 for setting it out. You just make up a box. 440 by 375 and then you decide what angle you're going to come in at. I'm not using an angle as such, I'm using measurements. So I decided when I was, after playing around, I get your center line, always get your center line both ways when you're doing anything, I told you that before. Get your center line, measure over 80, I measured over 80 here and over 80 here. And then I have one center line and then I drew a line from there to there and a line from there to there. So it's 160 from that point to that side. Now, the width going of the, of the wood, it's of the leg itself, I'm making it 40 millimeters. And so the 40 millimeters will be going that way, not that way, obviously. So it'll be going that way there and that way there. On the top, there is no solid piece going across. There will be something uh, on it to, for fixing, okay? We will worry about that later, but we will make up this shape and we will sandwich them together. So I joined them all up, I measured 40 there. You can see my dots, this dotted line is the center. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this onto the plywood and make up one of these. Okay, so I cut the plywood, I'm going to glue them before I cut them. I was going to cut three pieces for each side and then glue them together after I've made the, the shape. 
but uh, no, I'm going to make sure my uh, I'm doing it in the bandsaw. If you were doing it, in, if you don't have a bandsaw, probably better off uh, cutting them separately. If you were just doing them with the jigsaw, so I'm going to work really, really quick here. The next one has nothing on it. Okay, so I put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 12 clamps on, and I put them around the edge, and I put these big ones that are going in towards the center of it. So uh, we will clean off the, uh, the excess glue. What I done was I put it over on its edge, and I clamped it down to keep them straight. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's fine. The glue is oozing out everywhere, so we will wipe it down. Don't use a wet cloth, use a very, just a little bit damp. Wet cloth uh, on plywood is not good. These came out fine. Uh, they're heavy, but when we cut them down, they will be much, much lighter. I have marked them out the very same as I've done over here on the board. Uh, I'm leaving a piece here on the top for, uh, for fixing. Normally, you would never screw, uh, you wouldn't glue a leg to a table, you will screw it to it. And we will make up some sort of a bracket to go here later on. All the way down now uh, there's the white and we should be true yeah they're coming out fine uh, lighter now a little bit lighter leaves it easier to do uh, just take your time at them uh, I'm able to keep straight. I'd, uh, if I had a wider blade now, I broke my last half inch blade. As you saw there, I've made up these brackets for it, right? These brackets, uh, they're from mahogany. I'm going to glue them in here. Uh, when you're normally putting legs to a table, you don't actually glue legs to a table, mostly for uh, uh, expansion and contraction. But uh, in this case, not really. But at the same time, I don't want to glue these to the table in case you want to remove them again so they will have four screws in, in, in each leg, the two here. So the bracket is going to hold this. The bracket is slightly away from the table. It's going to be maybe less than a millimeter and it should pull it in uh, tight. Glue is mainly to hold it in place rather than, uh, than actual strength. You can put another little bit of glue here if you want to. We'll, we will uh, finish sanding it up and then we will give it a coat of primer. I already pre-drilled these holes uh, because it's easier to drill them now uh, than, than later on. Okay, so uh, I put a little bit of fillers in them from epoxy filling and now I'm going to try and spray them. I'm going to spray them and then leave them for three minutes and spray them. I'm using acrylic so I don't have to bother too much about uh, wearing a mask. If you feel like wearing a mask, you can. I'm not going to wear a mask for this. If I find the fumes, then I will pick up a mask. So I'm going to do very light coats and uh, I'm going to turn it over. I'm, I'm probably going to do it this way first. Yeah, I'll do it this way first and then this way and then the other way. This part has been joined to the table so it doesn't matter so much. Make sure the area is ventilated and dust free and that. So we'll try. And then I will turn it over this way. No, well I will do this side. For, I'll do down here then. And this is the part, important part because we're going to see this. Keep it about uh, 10 inches away, or more even, and then I'll put it around this way. I've got some on my hand already, but anyway, I should have put a glove on my... <laughs> so just remember, less is more. You can go on it again later, and then I'm going to turn it over. 
different, the acrylics are different. But we don't want to make dribbles, that's the main thing. So you don't put on too much. If you put on too much, you'll surely get a run and then your whole thing is ruined. You'll have to wait for it to dry and sand it down. We'll give it two or three coats like this and see how it turns out. And then I'll get back to you. Okay, them legs take, came out very nice. I'm very happy with them. Uh, and now we're on the final straight. I have coated this with epoxy. Uh, uh, the bottom is, is not perfect. We don't need it perfect, but it's sealed. You want to seal the wood because the wood will warp if it's not sealed. I'll set these aside. Uh, for the final coat of epoxy to stop it bubbling, uh, I'm going to heat the epoxy. I'm going to actually heat this a little bit as well, even though it's very hot here. Slight little bit of humidity today. It's sunny outside, but uh, I'll be putting on the last one instead of with a roller, and we will be very careful when we're mixing it that we get less bubbles. But I will heat the epoxy in hot water. I will show you in a minute. And I will use squeezy as well instead of roller, so it, it won't make so much bubbles. We will be on standby with our, our, our uh, uh, hot air gun, our, our heat gun, uh, to, to any bubbles that come up in the first couple of hours afterwards. Uh, and we will, we will kill the bubbles. Uh, I'm after mixing this up very, very gently, but at the same time, uh, there is slight bubbles in it. I have hot water here at 46, 45 degrees Celsius. And I'm just going to put it into it for now and it should get rid of the bubbles leave it in for a few minutes I'm going to try it with the squeezy now if you can get a silicon squeezy or a small silicon brush that would be much better than what I have here so uh, I'm going to pour this on gently like this and I'm going to see how it works no, that's not very good. It's not spreading it very well. It's too, it's too hard. Uh, I will use the brush. I think. Let's see. This squeezy is not good. It's a less than one dollar squeezy. So that turned out not too bad. There is a little bit of outgassing in a few places. Uh, that's because end grain and I didn't seal it properly. So what would I do differently the next time? I can repair this afterwards. Uh, what would I do differently? I would seal it first with lacquer or something like that because the epoxy is so thick it won't fill the pores and then you will get outgassing and I've got outgassing in a few little places. They're not sticking up very much. You can pull it, you can sand this with 200, uh, 2000 or 1.5 sandpaper and then polish it with car wax, normal car wax if you want to. So now we're going to turn it over and we're going to fit our legs to it. And balance them. Now, now, they're very steady. Now, they're stronger, even stronger than I expected. The bottom of the table where the epoxy came around, we'll have to sand that off and polish it off. You won't see it, but we will get rid of it. These are stick on. Uh, it's going on a tile floor. Now, that's our coffee table finished. Uh, we have a little bit of touching up to do on it. Uh, the, a little bit challenging job, but it came out very nice. I'm happy with it. Uh, it's going to go into our living room. It's a big room and we need a big coffee table in it. And uh, yes, this is uh, a little bit of a polishing up. So thank you very much for uh, watching this video on, on Live Edge uh, table with, uh, with these unusual legs. Some people, well, my friends said they are unusual, but they said they're, they're, they're nice. Uh, they're hourglass legs. So. Uh, I will now I will uh, just tidy this up and bring it into the living room and we will sit at, at it this evening. And thank you again for watching and please subscribe.